everybody, it's Pineapple here. So today I wanted to talk about how I won Yu-Gi-Oh! Day at my OTS store because it was a fabulous experience because I won. Uh, and I of course won with uh, Sword Soul, uh, Sword Soul Bestial Tendi. Uh, and I wanted to give the lowdown on how I did it, uh, the deck list, my thoughts on the deck, how it performed, etc, etc. Uh, this will mostly just be a video where I ramble and talk about my experience, uh, which some of you seem to enjoy very much. I enjoy making that content, so of course, uh, let's hop right into it. So, first up, we have, of course, three copies of Mogi. Of course, on normal or special, you reveal a sword, soul, and worm, uh, make the token, uh, and then you can make an eight. Uh, it's fabulous. It's Mogi. You should know what this card does. Um, we then have Incredible Ecclesia of the Virtuous which in testing yesterday did in fact come up, the fact that she's an inherent summon, because it let me beat Inspector Border exactly, because I could make normal Taya and then special her out, and then make uh, Chi Xiao in order to uh, summon uh, Boxia, sorry, not Chi Xiao, uh, summon Boxia, and subsequently spin uh, away the Border. Um, but yeah, she... she, she She's amazing. She's an extra copy of Mogi. Um, you love, we love Ecclesia. She's probably my favorite card in the game, just artistic-wise. I, I love Incredible Ecclesia the Virtuous. This card's fantastic. Unfortunately, it's a light, so it turns on your opponent's best deals. Uh, we then have three copies of Larwan. You have you just discard a Worm or a, another Sword Soul card. Summon him, make the token, make a six. Uh, make a six or ten, um, which is fantastic. Um, you'll notice that... Uh, the best deals are also sixes, which means you can make six or tens with them as well. Um, we then have two copies of Taya. Uh, Taya is fantastic, especially when you get in a grind game. Um, he's he's great. He's very much not what you want to see in your starting hand, though, unfortunately. However, you can sometimes bring him back with Shaman. Uh, turn one to end on that third, uh, or second, sorry, uh, Synchro 8. So, it's Taya. He's fantastic. You know him. You love him. Um, but he's... Not the best going first, but he is the best going third. Uh, for our 10 we're on triple Ashuna. Ashuna Matata is the best one. Um, it's a 7. It summons more from deck. It does, unfortunately, worm lock you. But, you know, that's a small price to pay. And since I don't play Barone, I'm pretty much uh, only summoning worms anyways. Yes, spoiler alert. We're not playing Barone. And it's not because Barone is bad. It's because I am poor. Um, let me be clear. You should be playing Barone. And there were multiple times today where I was like, damn, I really wish I had Barone. But it wasn't for the negate, it was mostly for the pop effect, which is fantastic. We then have one Vishuda. Uh, Vish Vish is amazing. It's Vishuda. He's uh, non-destruction removal. Unfortunately, it is targeting, but it's still non-destruction removal. It's fantastic. Adara, because it's a level 1 tuner that you can summon off of Vishuda. Uh, and it is a uh, just a great card. It adds things back to your hand. It's great in the grind game. Uh, it's Adara. You love him. Um, we then have one copy of Shatana. Uh, Shatana isn't played so much for the effect as its stat line. It's a level 4 worm, which means that when I summon it off of Ashuna, if I have a spare token, I can make a Synchro 8. It comes up sometimes, uh, but, but you gotta play it so that, you know, when it does come up, you don't get fucked because you don't have it. But, you know, you gotta play him. That's, that's how it is. Uh, we are on one copy of Destrudo, uh, who is fantastic in this deck because he gets you to Yazi. Uh, the thing that's great about Destrudo is you can search him off of Magma, which is like, feels so smart. You're like, add Destrudo, um, like, off Magma, and people, the look on people's faces is, it's priceless. And then you sink and you make Yazi, and you can Yazi pop something and then grab Moe. Um, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Uh, or he's just a free Link material for Dark. Um, it, he's, uh, he's unbelievable. He's, he's, he's Destrudo. He's, he's great. He makes the, your best Synchro 7, your only Synchro 7, actually, I should say. And he's, um... He's a free body. Uh, I don't know what to say. And he's searchable because of Pizza Hut, which should be bad. Um, that's that's a different debate. Uh, next up, we have three copies of Druid Swarm. Uh, it's Druid Swarm. Uh, beats your element. Uh, this card is fantastic. Uh, it's DD Crow. Uh, and then it's a 25 body. And then it's a removal spell. It's Druid Swarm. He's also a 6, which means that you can uh, use him to do all sorts of war crimes. Like uh, pair him with Destrudo to make Yazi and... Uh, you know, make Barone if you're playing a list that can afford Barone. Uh, we then have three copies of Magnemot. Uh, again, like I said earlier, you can use him to search uh, your copy of Destrudo. He's fantastic. He's Pizza Hut. Uh, I don't think I had to explain why Pizza Hut is a good card. It's Pizza Hut. Uh, we then have one copy of Sarnir. Uh, again, this list is designed specifically to beat Tier Element. Um, so we are playing a lot of the Bestials. 
Um, but that, that's just how it is. Uh, you know, you got to play the Biss deals. I'm only playing seven Biss deals because I didn't want to overcommit to the Biss deals, especially when I'm playing Imperm and Valor, which, uh, you know, also beat them because Imperm Kick Colors is basically an FDK in, to a certain extent. Um, but moving forward, we have three copies of Emergence. This is Rota. The second effect doesn't really come up since you're not really going to be adding uh, Protoss because he's banned. Uh, re rest in peace, uh, that cancerous card. Thank God he's banned. He's OP in a best of three. Uh, but Ro it's, it's Rota for... It, it reads Ad Moe or Taya, depending on what you want. Um, but yeah, he's great. Uh, Desires, this card's amazing. It makes Cheng Ying fucking huge, which is awesome. We love we love huge Cheng Ying. Uh, we then have Blackout. Uh, it's Blackout. Uh, pop two cards is fantastic. Um, it comes up a lot. It's fantastic. Clear two guys and then banish another one with Cheng Ying just feels so good. It feels unbelievable. Uh, we then have three copies of Impermanence. Uh, we want to beat uh, Kikalos. This beats Kikalos. We then have three copies of Ash. Uh, beat Rogue stuff. Valor. Uh, again, beat Kikalos. Uh, beat Rogue stuff. And the extra, we have one copy of Ready Rose. Uh, this did come up for me today. Uh, I did it to a Tirashizu player in uh, my first round. Uh, and it actually, like, banished, like, two or three of their shufflers and, like, two or three of their millers. So, like, they were out of, like, all their cards in the grave. It was pretty funny. Uh, I di I, it, it did come up. I think Ready Rose is fine, especially if you're not playing Barone. It's a va very valid, like, other, like, level 10 you can play. I like it. Uh, you don't have to play Ready Rose. You can definitely play Baron. You should play Baron, but I, I don't have Baron. Uh, we then have my MVP of the day, Cheng Ying. We were making him every fucking game, and he was putting in the work. Uh, this is this is this card's fantastic. It's Cheng Ying. Uh, the fact he's generic is unbelievable. I love Cheng Ying. He's my boy, my big man. Um, but yeah, he's awesome. He's Cheng Ying. Uh, Non-targeting banish from Grave and Field is fantastic. We then have Evil Long One. Um, this reads beat things that like want to use continuous spells uh, or specifically adventure. He comes up sometimes when like you don't get to blackout, but you you know don't have Barone, but you want to have interruptions. He comes up a decent bit. He didn't come up a lot today specifically, but he does come up. He's fantastic. I like him a lot. I actually pulled him in a pre-release, uh, so I I have, a, I have a strong feeling about this card. I like him a lot. Uh, we then have one Draco Berserker. The Tenny, this is your extra eight that you're going to be making most of the time. Actually, it's the only extra eight you would be making. Um, uh, if you somehow can get see, get to the line that gets you Draco Berserker. Uh, he's really good against Tier Elements. He can banish the uh, Tears from the Grave uh, so that they don't resolve properly. We then have two copies of Chi Xiao. Uh, it's Chi Xiao. Uh, he's great. Uh, he searches Long One. Um, yeah, Chi Xiao is fantastic. Um, he's also Imperm on legs. You know, he's awesome. We then have Double Boxia. Uh, Boxia breaks apart boards like they're nothing. Spin two cards is fantastic. Bring back a Sword Soul card. Unbelievable. He's unbelievable. Yazi as well. This card is unbelievable. Pop a guy and then summon Moe from deck. Just just brutal. Uh, especially considering that Magnemut is a one card uh, Yazi. If you're going second, you're, you Magnemut something. Add Destrudo in the end phase. Uh, and then summon Destrudo targeting uh, Pizza Hut. Uh, make Yazi and then summon either Moe or Tai, whichever one you don't have. If you you know, have one of them. We then have two copies of Monk, uh, so we can link away our attendees. One copy of Access Code for Selene. Uh, Selene is, a lot of people, you're going to be questioning this a lot, but Selene is unbelievable in the grind game, specifically because we are also playing Dark the Dark Charmer for our Bestials. So the thing is, Selene can bring back Incredible Ecclesia the Virtuous, which is the Synergy, which is hilarious, and then it turns your entire Sword Soul engine online. Additionally, you can just, you know, make Access Code and, like, go for game. So, like, you have both options. You can go Ecclesia into Moyi or Ecclesia into Taya, uh, banish a guy or reveal a guy, make a Synchro 8, continue on playing, um, and keep extending, or you can just go into Access. But bringing back Ecclesia in a grind game is just feels so incredibly powerful. It's it's awesome. Uh, we're on Dark because we're playing the Bestials. Dark, bring back a Bestial, uh, trigger their Magnemut, uh, make Selene, bring back Ecclesia. It feels amazing. We're on one copy of Shaman. This comes up a lot. It came up today specifically. I needed to... I discarded a Taya in order to uh, summon Long One, and then I used Shaman to bring back Taya uh, to get to game. Uh, Shaman's fantastic. You can discard a, a, a card, target a worm in your grave, special summon it, but you can't activate cards from the extra deck uh, except 10 monsters, uh, which is a...
pretty steep requirement, but if you're using this, you're pretty desperate and it comes up in corner cases, so it does matter a lot. Uh, in the side, we have three copies of Nibiru, uh, Beat Rogue Strategies, one copy of Sarnir. Uh, if we really needed more, we were just going to side one in, you know, see it, see even more bestials. For going second cards, we have Lightning Storm, uh, two copies of Evenly, and Triple Attack if we need them. Uh, and then we were on Rivalry of Warlords, because uh, if I'm siding out bestials for weird rogue decks, they oftentimes are losing to, like, uh, Rivalry. Uh, they're usually, like, Ishizu, like, things like Ishizu, Verna Self, like, those styles of decks that just hard lose to Rivalry. So, for now, we'll go over uh, how I won. So, my first match was up against uh, Ishizu Tier Element. Uh, game one, I just made um, Baron Chisha Blackout, or I made Chisha uh, Blackout Pass with a token on board because he, uh, he used, what's it called, um, Kelbeck to uh, bounce my long one to hand. Uh, and then he just didn't draw any names, fortunately, and uh, couldn't beat beat me game two he had full combo plus diviner so we ended on like barone rucolos elf and I just, I just couldn't play through it you know you're not beating that board also we had planet uh then game three i just had baron chi i uh, not baron i had uh cheng ying chi shao blackout abyss deal in hand valor i had i had everything game three so uh, that cleaned it up pretty well fortunately we won the dice roll because while this deck does excel at breaking boards uh, sometimes boards are just unbreakable. Uh, we then played Sprite. That was a pretty clean 2-0. Uh, we played uh, game one. I won the dice roll again. Thankfully, it was kind of my day on dice rolls. Um, uh, game one, I just made uh, Evil Long One plus Chisho. Passed back. Two hand traps. I had Ash, Valor. He normal he normal Beaver. Uh, declared effect. I just Chisho negated it. And he, he just scooped it up. He drew Angler, two Beaver, and then like Valor and like a hand trap. He, he just had nothing. Game two, we just went back and forth for a little while. And eventually we got to a simplified game state where Cheng Ying was just too fat for him to get over. He had Toad stolen my desires and I had resolved desires twice already. So he had also resolved as my own desires. So we, Cheng Ying was sitting at about a crispy like 68k. Uh, he was huge. Uh, he just he just couldn't get around Cheng Ying, and so that's that's how that game ended. And then for my third match, I lost the dice roll against Dark World, and he just didn't draw away to discard either game. And it was the saddest saddest sweep out I've ever played. I, I felt horrible. Um, but yeah, some tweaks I would make to this deck. Getting into it, I'd probably change out Storms for uh, Evenlies. Uh, I might. Swap in another Saranir. I might cut Shatana. I, I'm, not, I'm not too sure, but I had a really fun time playing this deck. I think it's super fun. I think Sword Soul can play just about everything as hand traps, and that's like one of the strengths of the deck. It has a great grind game, and it breaks apart boards really well. Um, it plays through things. It's Sword Soul. It's fantastic. Um, I, I've really enjoyed this deck, honestly. Like, seeing the Selene... Uh, Bestial lines feels unbelievable. It feels really smart, uh, especially bringing back Ecclesia. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.